Now, Executive Suites with WPRI.com reporter Ted Nisi. David Brett shocked the political world when he defeated one of Capitol Hill's most powerful Republicans, House Majority Leader Eric Cantor, in a GOP primary in Virginia. This is a miracle from God that just happened. What you may not know is that Bratt's campaign used technology developed and tested in Rhode Island to carry him to victory. The software is called R Votes, and its creator thinks it's just what Republicans need to counter the Democratic Party's tech advantage. And he should know, he developed NGP Van, the top software choice for lefty campaigns. This week on Executive Suite, the founder of R Votes, Steve Adler. Welcome to Executive Suite, I'm Ted Nisi, and this week we are uh, kind of morphing my newsmaker side with my Executive Suite side talking politics on Executive Suite. And this is a really fascinating story I'm glad to bring to you. Steve, thanks for being here. Thank you. So you got on my radar screen because that, and we're gonna talk about that election, David Bratt and Eric Kanner, but uh, Politico, the Beltway newspaper, called your technology, our votes, the secret weapon he used. So before we get into what happened down there in Virginia, just give people a thumbnail sketch. What is our votes? Our votes is uh, political software that runs on the internet, so it's, it's web-based. It's essentially a, a database of all of the constituents for a, for a candidate. Uh, and it allows them to effectively target who's persuadable, who's not persuadable, and get out the vote for those who can be persuaded. And, and that's the, sort of the, the big picture. But it includes all the tools to do stuff. That, that's, that people do in campaigns. Now, can it do, could it do any state? Do you have to redevelop it for each state? How does that work? It, it's state-centric. It has to be built for a state, uh, at least initially, and right now we're in a few states only. Uh, once it's built for that state, it can then accommodate thousands of campaigns uh, in, and special interest groups and so on, all within that state. So we build it once, and then people will come. So um, let's talk about that race down in Virginia. Like I said, secret weapon, Politico said. Nancy Smith, she was a prominent brat backer, worked hard in his campaign. She said, quote, it couldn't have been done without our votes. And I think this is a great opportunity for people to understand how it's used. How did they use our votes down there? And why do you think they thought it was so helpful to them in that underdog campaign? Sure. It was especially good uh, technology in the underdog dynamic there, uh, being outspent uh, how many, 40 to Hugely, 1, yeah, yeah. 26 to 1, something like that. Uh, the reason is one of the things that votes does is it empowers the grassroots volunteer base. Uh, and uh, Cantor's race was a traditional media buy, expensive advertisements and, 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 and the like. Uh, but uh, the guerrilla campaign, if I can call it that, uh, with, uh, with Brat, uh, really took advantage of free volunteers. And the system, the Arvote system, allowed those volunteers to finally do stuff that mattered in a campaign. So for example, uh, phone banks, which you, uh, campaigns usually pay a lot of money to have people by the hour make phone uh, calls. And they've been doing that forever. Forever. Uh, we still do phone banks, but, but my idea was let's make a personal relationship between the caller and the voters they're calling. So the, voter, uh, so the, the volunteers would uh, make phone calls for perhaps even their own home. All they need to do is log into to our votes and pick up their home, their home phone or voice over IP and read the script on the screen and, uh, and basically uh, you know, survey the constituents for free. And uh, we also add technology that matches the caller to the most appropriate voter automatically. So what pops up on one person's screen will be the closest to age, closest to location uh, person within the, 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 the scope of the people they're calling. So it's this personal neighbor to neighbor uh, uh, effort. So, it, I, to be honest, it sounds so simple that it seems shocking that the House Majority Leader could get, you know, uh, overtaken in part by technology that sounds like it's just call the voters and get the information in there. What makes it powerful that they were so impressed by what it did for them? Well, the calling of the voters is just one of the tools. Uh, it you can invest also door-to-door -door with barcoded walking lists and iPhones and, and all that stuff. But uh, it, it all comes out on Election Day. All the data that's being collected on Election Day becomes empowering because we'll know uh, who is for us, who is against us, and on Election Day, in real time, we can cross-reference the people who have actually come and voted versus the ones we believe should be coming and voting for us, and the volunteers will then call those who have not yet voted. So it all, it all comes together. Now, I don't think uh, uh, Cantor's race really did any of that old-fashioned stuff. Part of the reason was I think they thought it was a shoo in Sure, yeah. And, and with this technology, uh, it really sort of gave them a shot. And it helped them overcome, in the Brat case, uh, the huge financial disadvantage they have with old media, TV ads, things like that, by using your technology. And, and that makes sense. So back uh, in 2001, when I originally developed what's now uh, Vote Builder, uh, on the, the Democratic on side, the Democratic side uh, uh, the, we consciously said for every 
dollar that they spend on the left, we want them to spend 50 to come back you know, on the right. So there's always this disproportionate financial thing part of the design. So uh, again, though, it, so it, it sounds like something that should be obvious, right? You need, you need to track these voters. You need to know who they are on election day. What's different about our votes, would you say, from other campaign technologies? There's a lot of technologies out there, uh, always have been, that do parts of our votes. Uh, some uh, technology does the, uh, the GOTV, the get out the vote effort on election day. Some does just the telephone calls. Uh, what our votes does is it takes everything and combines it in this holistic approach. Uh, and it does it. It does a few other special things that I, I'll probably talk about uh, next. That that it goes beyond just helping the single campaign using it. Uh, but what it does, I think, and what people tell me at least, is that it's particularly user friendly, and it empowers the volunteers. It, you know, every, at every stage, a volunteer can see what they're doing to contribute, what percentage of the calls they're making. It makes it exciting. There's games. You can earn points, and, and it just it's just. A yeah, you've said it's not it's not just technology, but art. And you know, it's funny to think of that that way, but I know you feel strongly about that. Why do you say that? Well, I say that because uh, having seen uh, so many companies come and go trying to uh, reproduce this type of system, uh, and usually they're financed with millions of dollars, and, and uh, uh, what they, they tend to say is that we're going to hire the smartest guys in the IT world and build this super system. And uh, what I, when I look at those systems, they, they typically uh, have a lot of the technology built in, but they're missing the love. <laughs> They're missing that special, um, uh, whatever it is. Kind of the human factor, how yeah, it will yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And all the things that you really need to do when you're a volunteer in a campaign. Uh, and the, and it's not just the, the, the features that we put into the system that make it powerful. It's the features that we decided not to put in. Uh, and I see a lot of people just throwing all sorts of stuff in that I know is not going to, it's going to hurt things. Kind of so, like how you hear Apple talk about things they didn't do in the iPhone to make it easier to use or something. Right, like an iPhone you can't uh, put an expansion port or a memory card or something like that. that yeah, but it's made the iPhone this super system. So what's the business model for our votes? You know, it's, you've set up as a for-profit business. What is that? Uh, well, we're still... Uh, 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 we're still <laughs> unintentionally a nonprofit, but uh, <laughs> we're going to we're hopefully uh, going to uh, uh, take off uh, any day now. And uh, yeah. so, so here's the thing: uh, uh, the system was designed when I did it on the left with, uh, with my former company uh, to be sold to the state parties because, uh, as uh, I'll get into, the technology really uh, empowers a state party. Uh, they give it to all of their campaigns within the state, and that helps each campaign. But the data flows up into the state party, cycle after cycle, building this amazing uh, database that's being groomed by all of what we call the capillary campaigns, the ventricle campaigns, you know, uh, dog catcher or city council, because they're knocking on doors too. Uh, tried that model with our votes, went to all the uh, state parties, and for one reason or another were rejected by all of them except Rhode Island's GOP party. Uh, so uh, the business model in our votes is, well, we can't sell to the intended market, the state parties, uh, so we're selling downstream to county parties and directly to the candidates. This is a lot more work for us because we have to maintain relationships with all these, uh, but uh, it's, it's starting to be effective. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk much more with Steve about how he came to build our votes on the Republican side now, and originally Vote Builder and NGP Van, the biggest one on the Democratic side. It's a great story, so stick with us on Executive Suite. That's perfect. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and my guest this week is Steve Adler, a Rhode Islander. He's the founder of Our Votes, and he was co-founder of NGP Van, which built uh, the dominant campaign technology used on the Democratic side of the aisle. Now he's working with Republicans. And Steve, people are going to be surprised that you're doing this from Rhode Island, right? Shouldn't you be in some K Street Washington office building or something? How, why, are you, why are you running the company out of Rhode Island? Um, <laughs> a lot of people ask me that. Uh, well, I was born and raised in Providence, and... Uh, I like it. Uh, uh, what I do is, is virtual work. You know, it, it's all data, and I, it lives in cyberspace. So I can do what I need to do from anywhere no one really sees. And uh, so I might as well do it in the state that I was born and raised in and know and love, and my family's here. Must be a lot of travel. Uh, I go from my house to my office about 35 feet uh, <laughs> every day. But I, I, I often do travel state to state when I have to. And I think I've been in 48 of the states so far between this and my former company. Now, one of the funny parts of all this, people are going to assume you are Mr. Politics. You're always on Twitter. 
you're reading the, the trades, everything else. Oh, yes. And, right, but when, uh, when I, when I uh, talked to you about doing the show, you said, I'm not that into politics. You're interested in the technology, but. And that's always been true. Uh, when I, uh, you know, in my van days, uh, my uh, business partner, uh, Mark Sullivan, was the, uh, the political guy. He was a computer guy, too, but uh, I, I never really been a political guy. Uh, and, and I guess it's because I'm a computer geek. In fact, I, I don't really get out very much. And, and, and uh, that's my specialty, is understanding the technology and being creative with that. The politics uh, is cl clutters, clutters things. <laughs> Gets in the way of the uh, technology. It, right, and a lot of people have a problem with that, but that's, that works for me. And, uh, I just have to, it's very embarrassing at cocktail parties. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you about how you got interest, invested in this in the first place. I know a couple names that might be familiar to people. You mentioned Mark Sullivan, but there was someone before that, right, who got you to start to think about sure. how technology could be used in campaigns. That's right. Uh, John Tabella, the late John Tabella, unfortunately. Uh, he was the chief of staff for uh, uh, Jim Langevin when he was uh, Secretary of State. And uh, he sort of brought me in in the uh, mid '90s, early '90s, uh, to, to to integrate technology with uh, with politics. He had uh, the ideas with barcode and walk sheets. This is back in the late '80s when he first did this, and and uh, so he was way ahead of his time. Uh, and uh, he uh, introduced me to this business, and that's sort of what started the, that relationship between the, the politics and technology. And then you mentioned Mark Sullivan. Uh, it's kind of a funny story. You guys were working on an AFL CIO project in Massachusetts, right? That, that's right. That's right. And uh, there was a problem with uh, a system that Mark had written, a, s a software system. Now, at the time, I had built the hardware and the, the networking, and I also did software. But they didn't hire me for that software, and I was a little annoyed. <laughs> they hired this other guy. Well, it didn't work. The guy was blaming the network guy, me, and I was blaming the computer guy, him. And the, uh, the manager finally said, listen, enough finger pointing. I'm going to have you both in, work it out. And so that's how I met him. We came in. and. Yes, it was all his fault, <laughs> uh, but, we, we, but we were nice about it. And uh, he called me up a couple of weeks after that and said, hey, I'm on the, a panel that's trying to find a, a voter system for the Iowa Democratic Party. Do you think you can help? And I said, yeah, I just came off a project that was uh, for Fidelity Investments. That was a large scale database on the web. I had done this work with John Tabella in, in political databases that wasn't web based because there really was no web in those days. Um, and uh, it was a perfect project. So we, I just did it as a sort of an experiment with, with Mark um, as a, another consulting project. And um, very quickly, the, it grew. It, it grew by word of mouth. Uh, after Iowa got on board, I think it was Missouri, and, and they told two friends, and so on. And of course, and, Iowa, the epicenter every four years of politics with the caucuses. Right, right, and, and exactly. And, and so I remember when Mark uh, I mentioned it, it's like, I didn't know much about politics, I said, but I said, I've heard of Iowa. And so, and so that was uh, that was how that started, and it just grew so quickly and organically. Based yeah, on I mean, I'm, I'm, I want to make sure people at home understand just how you know I cover campaigns a lot of the time. NGP Van is everywhere on the Democratic side. I mean, they're all using it. They're all taking the data out of it. It became so dominant in a short period of time. I mean, what do you attribute that to? Do you think it goes back to that technology, the art thing you were talking about? Uh, it did what it did so well. And it, it wasn't dictated from the top down as we're going to build a super system. It was one of many competitors that went from the bottom up and it flowed to the top. So it sort of was proven to be, for whatever reasons, what it, what it did well, it did well. Now uh, you stepped aside um, with that in 2005 and you made a, a deal uh, to, to keep the code base, I think, right? Yes. Tell me about the how you decided when you were when you were leaving NGP yeah. Van. Well, technically, it wasn't NGP Van during Excuse my tenure. Me, okay. It was it was uh, Van Voter Activation Network. Uh, the NGP part happened in a merge. Oh, years right, later. they had a merge. I'm sorry. So, yep. so, so uh, but um, basically, uh, the situation changed, and I was I was seeming somewhat superfluous, and uh, I had an opportunity to to leave to be bought out. Uh, and uh, but still negotiated this this code base that I had spent my life essentially building. Uh, the caveat was I had a five year non compete. Now for some people at home might say code base. What exactly is that? What's well, that's the, the actual intellectual property. All the, the code, you know, the million and a half lines of code uh, that make up the system. That, so that, what that, you uh, see on the screen, there's a code behind that, and you built that. The, and there's so much more that you don't see. That's also a very very critical part. All the decisions it makes, all how it handles the database and so on. So there's this massive code base that I knew was incredible powerful and valuable and uh, I guess their uh, feeling about giving me that as an option was that in five years they figured that everything <laughs> would be so much more advanced and, and, and it had advanced but but I also kept working on it in those five years even though I couldn't sell it I was still secretly at night, you know. Now, uh, do, uh, how, when did, did you have a moment, did you already know then you were going to try to uh, use that code base to create the Republican version of it back in 05 when you, when you got bought out, or did that come to you over time? Um, a little bit of both, a little bit of both. Uh, 
I, I, uh, I, I saw the, the opportunity and the mismatch of, of uh, technology. I mean, by, by af uh, after the five years expired, I, it was so clear that, that the left was just years ahead of the right. And, uh, and a close friend talked me into the final, you know, listen, you've got to do this for the right. And so, you know, so I did. Uh, okay, right. I, I uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was, it, it just seemed totally out of balance. And, uh, and, and, it's, and I thought it would be a whole lot easier. And that's what we're going to talk <laughs> about after the break. Yeah, about uh, where, where Steve's technology is being used and where it isn't being used. And uh, why he thinks that is, that it's, it's not some of these technological things aren't taking off as quickly on the Republican side of the aisle and what might change that. So stick with us for the more conversation on Executive Suite. Welcome back to Executive Suite. I'm Ted Nisi, and my guest this week is Our Votes founder, Steve Adler, a native Rhode Islander, still lives here, still works here. Steve, um, just before we get into sort of what you've run into with the, the official Republican Party uh, in some quarters, from the conversation before, it's not, it wouldn't be correct to say that NGP Van, your old democratic system that's still out there uh, with other folks doing it, and our votes are the same, right? Oh, but certainly not, no. Uh, they started life identical. In April 1st, 2005, we literally took that system and made a copy of it. And I went my way, and they went their way. Uh, and, and, and they continued to develop it. They've completely rewritten it. I continued to develop it. I completely rewrote it. And, uh, you know, it, it was interesting. I was always through the years wondering, well, what do they look like? You know, almost like looking at pictures of, a, of an old girlfriend. Um, but uh, I, uh, uh, in 2012, I stumbled across something they put on the, on the Internet, and uh, it showed screenshots. And I put that on my website because I was shocked to see after years, seven years, I think, after I left, the, uh, the, the systems grew uh, in parallel trajectories, they look like I said, uh, uh, twins separated at birth. Now I've done a bunch of stuff that I hope they haven't done yet. I'm sure they've done a ton of stuff. They've grown immensely. But uh, the heart of the system, which was so proven and successful, they were smart and kept, as did I. So they're, they're profoundly similar. Uh, Even though you're now competing with it uh, by doing the technology for Republicans, do you feel any pride of authorship when you see how successful Van's oh, been? Oh, I, I do. I do. Uh, you know, it, it was it was a great experience, a lot of fun. I'm, I'm still you know, in good terms with all those guys, even though, uh, you know, I sort of uh, went to the other side. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, very so proud. So, here's the question. If our votes is so great, why aren't all the Republicans using it? Well, that's a good question. And, and that's a question that I, I uh, was a little bit shocked, you know, January 1st, 2010, when I said, I'm here. And uh, so I've, I have a few theories on why it's not taking off on the right. Uh, part of it is I, I, it just the market on the right doesn't really understand technology as much as the left for whatever reasons. The age difference, the, the fact that conservatives are by nature conservative. So, I mean, there's that going on too. Um, but I am also finding an awful lot of um, politically charged internal politics of politics. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the times the, uh, these companies, the people who are using uh, and building technology on the right, uh, have very lucrative contracts and they're with people who are the ones who are making the decisions. And, it, and I'm, a, I'm a nobody politically, it's just the technology. So I think there's a lot of just internal political reasons. But, uh, it's a good question. If it's so good and everyone who uses it says it is, why hasn't it taken off? And yet, especially when you look at their last couple election results, I mean, <coughs> Republicans thought they had such a good opportunity in 2012 and really had a, were very disappointed in what happened. You now see, da I mean, since the David Bratt victory, are you getting a lot more phone calls or a lot, is there a lot more interest? There, there is. I get a lot of phone calls, but it's still slow in terms of, of new business. Uh, Part of the problem is that uh, it, there's a significant cost of entry to build our votes for a state. Once it's built, of course, a license for a small candidate is like $100 a year. But like building a hotel, you can't have people stay at the night inexpensively until you spend the millions on a hotel. Uh, so it's been hard to find the money. for How many it. states have you built out so far? Uh, we're, we just started our fourth one uh, just this week. So the three are Rhode Island, Virginia, and? And Texas. And, Texas. and then uh, Michigan is coming on board. Michigan coming on board, yeah. too. And actually here in Rhode Island, which is where you kind of road tested it, right, when it came on yeah, in 2010. In 2010. Um, we have a lot of campaigns going on this year. Is anybody using our votes in Rhode Island this year? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, the the uh, Block for Governor campaign is, is using it. Ken Block, uh, yeah. Yeah. And um, uh, Buddy CNC has uh, just engaged, uh, and they're going to do a, a great ground game on this. They see the value. Still Republican at heart, even though he's running as an independent again. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and, our using votes, our votes. Yeah, and our votes technically is center right, and, uh, you know, and there were. Yeah. And you're from Providence, so you. And I'm from Providence. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you, are you getting more interest 
Uh, maybe do do you see a softening? I guess can you if you were tracking how the feeling has been from you know being blocked by some of the Republican folks institutionally? Has it softened, especially with election losses and your own success? It, it, it has softened, and people I think are uh, I'm getting I'm getting more phone calls uh, saying so. Why don't we have this? But uh, until the checks are written, uh, you know, there's a lot of resistance when they go up staff and say let's get some funding for this system, uh, and they're being told no. We already have a system that we're going to use. It's the RNC you know, system of the year, which they say every year. Of course, there's a risk, it would seem a flip side risk, which is people like David Bratt, Ken Block, to kind of an outsider candidate this year in that race in Rhode Island, that, that they can license the technology then and beat the establishment candidate. And that's a very interesting point. And I think it's one of the things I find pretty fascinating, that by uh, this, whatever reason uh, of being uh, rejected by the RNC and by most state parties, uh, this powerful tool has fallen into the hands of the rebels, uh, so to speak. Uh, they, people call these the nukes, you know, the super secret weapon. And uh, so with the Brat campaign, I think that you clearly, for the first time, saw that this technology, because it wasn't endorsed by the, by the status quo, uh, is, was being picked up by the opponents, uh, the, the ones that got no support from, from their establishment and are using it against them. So now I, uh, the GOP is finding themselves fighting this technology both on the left and by a... Uh, so insurgents on the right. right. Yeah. How much of a difference do you think, let's say Republicans uh, really took up our votes in a big way in Rhode Island, how much, do you think it could make it swing a, a close election or it could even swing a not so close election? How much a difference can well, it make? I, I think uh, Rhode Island is, is a, an exceptional state. I think it's got 9% Republican. Uh, it's, it's, it's incredibly yeah. blue. So, uh, but typically with this technology, you can see a 7 uh, point increase in, in that's which they, people, that's a huge thing that, for any factor that in a campaign. And actually, if you look at the Brat numbers, it was, it was even higher than that. Uh, but what what uh, to answer your question, if a state party were to endorse our votes and use it in earnest the way it was designed, with lots of campaigns all contributing, uh, it has stunning effects. This is why it grew organically on the left to ultimately all 50 states using uh, what's now called Vote Builder, because uh, the system all feeds into the state party and builds the state party, cycle after cycle. It's not just about helping the candidates. Uh, the data, you know, in parallel helps everyone on that side of the political fence. And that's a very powerful feature. Only 30 seconds left. What are you looking forward to the rest of this year and into next year? Looking forward to more people realizing that this technology is available and to saying we don't care about the internal politics of politics. We just want to win our race and pick up the phone and start doing this. Well, we'll be watching. We'll see how those campaigns thank are working so on this year. Steve, thank you so much for being here. And thank you all for tuning in this week to Executive Street. That's all the time we have. Ne be sure to tune in the next two weeks. Next week, we're going to have an encore presentation of our interview with Green Core, the CEO there, which is that Irish food manufacturer building out in Quonset. And the week after, we'll have Todd Blount from Blount Fine Foods. You're probably familiar with his soups and chowders and things like that. We'll be hungry at the end of that show. So if you missed any of this episode or any other episode of Executive Suite, you can catch all of those on our website, WPRI.com, and I'll see you back here next week on Executive Suite. Awesome. And chat with me here.